Ganesh, yes. The name of this kutir is Ganesh Kutir. Because my Ishta Devata is Lord Shiva. And throughout my work, I have made prayers to him. And he has helped me. And the last prayer I made was in 1963. And gave him an undertaking that if I finish the work in 20 years, the expansion of yoga and extension of yoga, I will renounce everything and I will not ask you anything anymore. So now, no asking, I only remember his name. But in his spiritual life, one does need help, divine help. So I thought, why not Ganesh Ji? Because he is the son of Lord Shiva, and I am a devotee of Lord Shiva. So we are Guru Bhai. We are brothers. We are Guru Bhai. So I have established him here. It's known Ganesh Kuti. And uh, I offer him sweets. And I also eat it. Otherwise my food is very ordinary. But Ganesh Ji likes Good food, so I too. And why? And what energy do I need now? I don't need energy to go and come and to. I need energy for inside mm -hmm. to sit three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours. We need energy even for that. So that energy is possible only when your fat is less. Charbi jab tak yada hogi. तो अंदर के लिए शक्ति नहीं बन सकती है वो बाहर के लिए ठीक है कुदाल लाल मारो झाड़ू लगाओ कुछ भी करो अंदर की शक्ति के लिए तो आदमी को खड़ खड़ काया कॉल फ्रेम खड़ खड़ काया खड़ खड़ काया निर्मल में देर इज ए ट्राइडेंट एंड देर इज ए काउंस and there is a pot, pitcher, mud pot, eh? three things. Trident represents Shiva. Conch represents Vishnu. The pitcher represents Brahma, the creator. So Brahma represents creation, creator, who creates. Vishnu represents who maintains, looks after. And Shiva creates, the Shiva represents this embodiment. This destruction. Find out what are dhar what is dharma and what is adharma, what is goodness, what is badness, how one should think, what one should do, what one should not do, what is addiction, what are bad habits. And in the course of time, if you are a transformed person, then whatever you tell others, they will listen to you, otherwise they won't. You see? I, if I'm a thief, and I ask you not to be a thief, you won't care. It won't work. Right? Yes. 
And uh, if you want to practice more pranayam, take more milk, more curd, vegetables, raw and boiled or baked. Mm-hmm. You understand? And less of uh, like meat, red meat, red meat. Yeah. Fish is okay. Fish is okay. Yeah, fish is okay. Fish is okay, and sometimes chicken is also okay. But that, what about red meat? Beef. No, no. Beef. Beef. No. Yeah. It is intended for strong men who break stones and uh, climb hills and do all kinds of heavy and hard jobs. Yeah. I, I do work very hard. Your work is tenuous, not hard. <laughs> there is a difference in standing. You see, stand your job. He, he, he picks up the pearls, shells. Oh. He dives. And he has to go in. He has to breathe in through that mask and he inhales nitrogen. So the nitrogen goes into the blood vessels. <laughs> and then all these things will go. Taka, taka, hoi lagta hai. You must pray. You see, if you want to give up the job, that's another matter. But if you want, in this uh, presented world, no job is risk-free. If you work in a textile factory, the cotton go inside. If you work in a chemical factory, the chemical go inside. If you are a doctor in a hospital, all those shoes go inside. Risk is everywhere. Only if you are a farmer, perhaps there is no risk. But farmers don't earn much. Their income is meager. Farmers don't earn much. Otherwise, farming is the best. Purity, open air, working hard, sweating, but then income will be meager and you won't be able to enjoy life (laughs) without money. (laughs) So the best thing is you find out you know you asana and pranayama. Your father, does he remember still asana and pranayama or had he forgotten? Oh, I think he still remembers. Still remembers? Yes. Oh. It's Perth, you said, eh? Yes, that's what it's In Perth, there are so many teachers you can teach. You just get a uh, refresher course. So one hour, two hours, mm-hmm. pranayama, asana, meditation, shooting on a star, and everything you do. Then you go for your diving. Try for a year. And if you find still it is not working, then give up the job. Find something else. But don't have negative attitude yeah. or pessimistic attitude about your job. Now you are in the job, you have pessimistic attitude. That is human nature. You change this job, go to another job, you will have the same pessimistic attitude after some time. In the beginning it will be nice. You will be optimistic. Oh, very good, very good. Very. After six months, again, the mind turns. You have the same pessimistic attitude because of human nature. Mm-hmm. Hmm? So it's only human nature then that makes my mind like this. Yes, we are all slaves of human nature and we don't really understand it. We try to change it. We try to influence the events and we are not able to influence the events. No, I have a girlfriend, and she doesn't listen to me. Why will she listen to me? Because she's my girlfriend. But if she's my wife, in the Indian fashion, she will have to listen to me, and I will have to listen to her. Because for her, I'm the only person, and for me, she's the only person. For her, there is no other man, and for me, there is no other woman. Naturally, she will have to listen to me, and I will have to listen to her. She will have to take care of the baby. I will have to take care of the baby. Not because she is my baby, it is her baby as well. <laughs> that is the concept in the West. They say, she is my child. How can it be your child? You can't grow a seed without a field, right? You are the seed, but mother is the soil. She is a fertilizer. The seed grows there. (laughs) (laughs) So this body is a chariot, right? Buddhi, the intellect is the chariot. 
The soul is the passenger. And the five senses of action and five senses of knowledge are the horses. And if the horses are not trained, when you are driving the chariot, they won't drive the chariot properly. And therefore one has to train the horses first before they are yoked to the chariot. <laughs> First of all, you have to understand what the death is. What happens when the bulb fuses? What happens to electricity? Where does it go? When the machine is broken, it doesn't run anymore. What happens to the energy that was running the machine a few moments ago? That is, that is to uh, explain the relationship between the body Atma. and Atma. The individual soul, as we call it, Jivatma, yes. individual soul, is the dweller of this body, in this body. And the body is created by a combination you know. And when the body is created in the fourth month, <laughs> the Jivatma Inter. enters the body. And uh, at the proper time, the body comes out and he plays his role according to his karma, according to his destiny. And when the death comes, the body refuses to house him anymore. The bulb gets fused, either heart attack takes place, or coronary thrombosis, or cerebral thrombosis, or something like that. So the soul has to leave the body? Say here. Atma No. Atma? The individual soul is a the individual soul is a spark of universal soul. Paramatma. Paramatma God. Atma, individual soul, is the spark of Paramatma God. We call it universal soul, Paramatma. Just as the electricity in your home is a spark of the total electricity that is produced at the generating point, it is a spark. And after the death, it withdraws and remains in hibernation. Sometime, depending on the country. But where? Well, there are so many spheres. There are so many planes of existence. There are so many worlds. There are so many creations. Creations within creation. This creation is this creation is which you see this creation, this earth, is Vyakta Srishti, manifest in universe. Vyakta Srishti, you can see with your eyes, you can feel, you can understand. But there are Srishtis, there are universes, within the universes. If you are able to withdraw your mind from this, then you can tune yourself with the other universe. There are many animals, many creatures, who live on a different level of experience. They have a different level. So this soul, after death, it enters into those loka. Loka means planes of existence. Loka means creation. Loka means srishti. Then 
Broadly speaking, there are seven. And those seven are named in Gayatri Mantra, Bhu Loka, Bhuar Loka, Suar Loka, under. Mahar Loka, Jano Loka, Tapo Loka, higher. Satya Loka, highest. These are known as the seven broad planes of existence where the Atma, according to the karma, goes. Do you have any choice over here? Huh? Do you have any choice? If you have strong willpower, if you are aware totally at the time of death, and if for you the death is not painful, and if for you death is not a loss, if for you death is not inauspicious, certainly you may have a choice. But if you are afraid of death, eh? no, not you, I mean anybody else. Nobody wants to die. <laughs> Nobody wants to die. The yogis, the Mahatmas, who have control of mind at the time of death, when the soul is leaving the body, they are aware. As you leave the train, as you leave your flat, as you leave your hotel, you know you are leaving. You know that you are going out. But if you are unconscious at that time, and if you somebody takes you out of the hotel, have you any choice? <laughs> you have no choice. Deko, ये जो प्रश्न तुमने पूछा है, ये प्रश्न जो है, एक बार नचिकेता ने यमराज से सीधे पूछा। कठ उपनिषद में इसकी कहानी आती है। Nachiketa was boy of a guru. He was the son of a saint. And he faced death squarely. And he asked, the death asked him, you are a very brave boy. You are able to face me. What do you want? I give you three bulls. He asked one bull, how to practice heavenly fire? How to lit heavenly fire? How to practice panchagni, which I do? That was the question. Second question was, what is what happens to the soul after death? And then he asked the for third boon also. So the Lord of Death said, I grant you two boons, but don't ask for the third one because it is a secret. And it shall remain a secret, and nobody shall know, neither gods, nor higher beings, nobody will know what is actually happening after the individual soul is body. कदम की दारी झूले बनवारी झूले बनवारी झूला रे सौंदर्य लहरी इज ए वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट साधना रेसिटेशन इट्सेल्फ इट वाज कंपोज्ड बाय आदि शंकरा व्हेन ए तांत्रिक was trying to kill him through mantra power. Adi Shankaracharya propounded the Advaita Vedanta, the unity of everything, not diversity, but everything is one. But there were many sects in this country. who got scared. They thought that if Shankara goes on preaching the truth 
of universe, then our business will close down. <laughs> this happens everywhere, even today. It happens amidst religions and sects. So they tried to kill him through mantra power. That is a particular tantric system that you can use a mantra to finish off someone. And it has been in the past also in many tribes, even in Europe it was. Then Adi Shankara, he went to the river Narmada and there he worshipped Devi. the beautiful form of Goddess. And he composed spontaneously Saundarya Lahiri. As a result of that, the evil influence of mantra was balanced. And if you want to know more about it, Swami Niranjan must provide you the detailed stories about Shankara. The adventures of Shankara from Kashmir to South from east to west. Huh? Do you know about Shank Adi Shankara? Yeah, I have to know, sannyasins must know about him. So this year my Panchagni begins on 14th January. This is the fifth, all five files. And so far I have kept a very good health, very good mind, and a very good environment, the trees, and they are all conscious beings, they are all living beings, they are all intelligent beings. For us they are silent, but they are not. They give us a message. I have planted sandal, wood trees, Rudraksha tree, Nilgiri, and Australians, avocado also I'm planting. Yes. Thank you very much for coming here and singing God's name because I find that is the only one thing which purifies inside and which purifies outside. Now Ganesh Kuti has become melodious. Lord Ganesha was installed. He came. I didn't get him. No. He came. And when he came, with came he came all that is beautiful. And you know Lord Ganesha is my Guru Bhai. He's my spiritual brother. You know how? Any idea? I am the worshipper, I am the worshipper of Shiva and he is the son of Shiva. So naturally he is my Guru Bhai. Of course it is an honor for me to have him as my Guru Bhai. <laughs> <laughs> and his way of living and Lord Shiva's way of living are diametrically opposite. Lord Shiva is a Siddha. Lord Ganesha is intellectual. Lord Shiva can live anywhere, in a cave or on the footpath, or a, but he likes nice place, tip top. You can see that Ganesha could live. <laughs> Lord Shiva lives with anyone. Mosquitoes will be there, cockroaches will be there, scorpions and snakes, well, anything. But no, Shangar, Ganesha means no mosquitoes, or only one rat. <laughs> Lord Shiva, what is that? She takes bhang, gaja, dhatura, cannabis, indica, but uh, Ganesha eats sweets, laddus, and he came to me of his own, I'm telling you very frankly. One fine morning, one boy was selling a uh, little statue of Ganesh in five rupees or ten rupees. Swami Satsangi purchased and she kept with him, with her. I did not even pay notice to it. 
On the same day, three Ganeshas came from Delhi. Somebody brought. I said, then I felt it, yes, he has come. Perhaps I need him. He doesn't need me. He is a privileged Guru Bhai. <laughs> Perhaps I need him. <coughs> so I installed one here, and one in my bedroom, one in my kitchen, and in my the other side. The Ganesha who is here, he is Ganesh Ramani. Ramani are the people all around me. That is the caste. And the Ganesha in my bedroom is Ganesh Bhattacharya. Because many Bengalis are here around. And the Ganesha in the kitchen is Ganesh Ayyar from South. My Guru was Ayyar. My Guru, Swami Shivananda's name was Kupu Swami Ayyar. And the Ganesha on that side is Ganesh Ali. Muslim. It is in matter. God is neither Muslim nor Hindu or nor Christian. You understand? He is above all religions, or you may be saved and say all religions are about him. And the day he came, my habits started to say, now I don't eat kichiri. No, 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 no. No. And strange enough that since then people have been coming here. Tripura came, she made rasam and sambar and khichdi and uh, this and that. I am having nice food with him because I bring and offer it to him. I wake him up in the morning. You know how do I wake him up? Huh? I burn cow drink and put all fragrant aromatic things like lohoban. Lohoban in English is called mir. Mir. Huh? You know which, were, which the four people from East took to Jerusalem when Christ was born? That was Lohban. Parsis also used Lohban and many other things as sandalwood. Another thing in the daytime at one o'clock and in the evening five o'clock. And his nice clothes. And why he has come, you know it? The difficulties, the obstacles are not only in the worldly life, even in spiritual life there are difficulties. Obstacles, you call them? Obstacles in the spiritual path. Obstacles in worldly life. Well, obstacles in worldly life, well, everybody knows it. Obstacles in the spiritual life, sickness, laziness, doubt. And if you can overcome that, then there is very great obstacle in spiritual path when you go in. When mind drops, and when mind drops, and when mind drops, you are, you don't know where you are. Whatever you have read in my books, or in Vivekananda's books, or any spiritual book, you don't remember anything at that time. You don't even remember who you are. You are lost in total darkness. And suddenly eyes open, back to the hell. <laughs> and every time you, every time you try to transcend the barriers of the mind, and every time you, you realize that you, are, you have come down. So Upanishads say, when the sun is set, when the moon is set, when the stars are set, when there is no fire, who shall lead this consciousness in that total and total darkness? Very really small light. And that small light is the form of Sri Ganesh. You understand? You, when you are in a tunnel, there is total darkness. But if you have a rope and your Holding the rope, you keep on, doesn't matter, darkness doesn't matter. So now I am holding on to Ganesha. I am finding that difficulty.
I had made a promise, or rather I had received a mandate in Trambakeshwar, where I decided this life. 21,600. Mantra. How? 15 per minute. 900 per hour. And 21,600 in 24 hours. So if I can sit like this for 24 hours without sneezing, without yawning, without urinating, without toileting, without sleeping, without eating, then only I can finish it. Okay, one day I can do it. But the problem is different. When you are concentrating on the breath, the 15 per minute becomes 12 per minute. <laughs> the breath slows down. Now I have to maintain total awareness that it is 15 and 15 and 15. When I'm trying to do that, <coughs> mind goes away. This is the obstacle which I am facing. And if I can do this 21,600 times, 4 a.m. to 4 a.m., I will feel that Lord Ganesha has helped me. <coughs> so He has come to help me. I, am I clear? Ah. All the jewels are within. But in darkness I can't see it. And everybody will have to confront these things in spiritual life. It's not that easy. Good, you have taken sannyas and you are living with a very good person, with a capable person, Swami Niranjan is taller than me. Is he not taller than me? You can, you can measure it if you, if you don't believe it. Kya? Niranjan Meshashu, lamba nahi hai kya? No, no, no. I am using the word taller. Taller in every respect. 